G'day and welcome. Just before I start the video, I have an announcement to make. I've been diagnosed with prostate cancer. The prognosis is excellent. And I've assembled a team of crack doctors to uh, get me through this. I've had some procedures carried out already and then I'll start radiation treatment. One of the side effects of radiation treatment is fatigue. So I won't be able to put out radios like I used to. Uh, there's been a bit of a gap while I caught up with some other stuff and dealt with this problem. I'm not after sympathy or anything like that. I just wanted to let you know so that you know where I am and also say to you that if you're a male and you're over 50, make sure you get PSA tests. When you get this early, it's easy to fix. So I'll still try and put some videos out, but uh, you know, they're going to be a bit slower than what they used to be. So thank you for your time and thank you so very much for your support at all times. So without further ado, let's get on with the video. G'day and uh, welcome back. Today I've got a bush radio. I picked this up from a, a lovely young lady up on the Sunshine Coast. So it's about an hour and a half drive either way. So three hour round trip to pick up the radio. Now I haven't seen anything like this before. It doesn't have a grill cloth. It's got this strange pattern. I'm not sure what they are. Now when I first saw this, I thought this was an Echo radio and I thought, oh, that's nice. It's in white. That'd be good. I'll add that to my collection. And then I realized it's actually a bush radio and it, it looks very similar to my Echo. It's got the same volume controls, but it's got this switch on the bottom, which is the same idea. So, so different companies, but uh, you, you can't tell me they don't copy each other's designs. There's another difference between this and the Echo. This one's got medium wave and it's got VHF or FM. So as soon as I saw the FM, I thought I got to grab that. Um, it only goes to 100. Uh, any stations I live, listen to are a bit above 100, but we should be able to tune a bit further past that. But like the Echo, it has this switch, and this is the FMAM switch. Uh, you switch between the two. Yeah, very similar design, almost identical. Anyway, the radio itself is perfect. There's really no damage to it. Uh, knobs are a bit dirty, but I think they'll clean up. The scale is good. Um, the case is good. The top's good. Even the back is in good condition. It's, there's no holes in it. It's got a bit of a dip in it, but, you know, that's okay. I'll take the back off and we'll have a look inside. I've just flipped the back around. Uh, that's the FM antenna there, little dipole antenna made into the back there. Now, oddly enough, there's no AM antenna. There's a stick antenna up there. So no external AM antenna. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, and there's the FM uh, valve there, so six. The tuning capacitor is mounted vertically, which is not unusual, but it's not that common. And of course, there's the FM module in there. I'll take it out of the case. The um, chassis and the speaker and the output transformer look like they're all separately mounted, but then wired together. So unless there's a plug somewhere, um, I'm going to have to take them all out and lay them out on the desk. I've removed the chassis. The speaker and output transformer stay there. There's enough wire to service the chassis and leave the speaker and output transformer in there. I tried running the tuner through and then the, the string just snapped off like a piece of licorice. So I, uh, I'll have to restring it. There's the AM tuning gang. There's the wheel on the top and here's the FM module. There's a little adjustable screw in this arc here and I think that's driving the FM module. So if I turn this pulley, it should pull the slug out. Yeah, there it is there. All right, so that's all working. Uh, the string felt wet, sort of gave fairly easily. I flipped it over. This is not what I was expecting at all. Um, they've got these, uh, these are what you would normally have paper capacitors. And uh, there's a 0 0.01, 0 0.01. So they're just standard capacitors. So that saves a bit of work. These should be fairly reliable. There's an old paper one there, I think. Now these electrolytics here have sweated out some of their contents, I think, they're all the same. There's three. There's one down the end here. That's not under any stress, and that's sweated it out too. So uh, they'll need to be replaced. I'll do those before I turn it on, I think. Uh, so just looking around, there's another capacitor. There's a Hunts capacitor there. Another Hunts capacitor there. There's another Hunts capacitor there. Here's the AM FM selector switch. It looks dirty, but uh, where the contacts are, it's quite clean. So it'll be all right. I'll clean all this up. 
I'll just try and work out what these capacitors are. We might be able to wipe that off. I'm not sure if it's on the outside or the inside. It's coming off. So it says two microfarad, 350 volts. We'll just spun this one around. This one's 5 UF at, uh, I think, 50 volts, is it? 50 volts. Whatever's on these capacitors is on the outside. It's not coming from inside the capacitor. I think it's just the plastic sleeve is giving off some chemical. Now, I'm going to have to go and buy some capacitors to fit these, but I don't think there's anything wrong. I think that ooze is on the outside. So I'm pretty happy to put some power on carefully and see what happens. I'm ready to go. I've selected it to AM to start with. Uh, this is a hot chassis set, so one side of it is on the mains. Uh, I've got it on dim bulb. Um, I'll put power on. Uh, now this is going through an isolation transformer. It's pulling 24 watts. That's a good sign. Now I can't hear anything. I can't see any glow in the valve there. Uh, I can see a bit of a glow in that one. So the, the valve string's okay. I'll put it on FM just for fun. Yeah, no, there's nothing there. Um, I can't hear anything out of the speaker. Uh, what are we doing here? We've got 23 watts, 218, so it should be able to work at that voltage. So I'd better turn it off and we'll see what's going on. Our AC connection is here. Uh, it comes up here, goes across here into this valve string and back to this, which I guess you call a B minus. It also goes up and presents at the rectifier here. The rectified AC comes along here. There's a filter and sits on this uh, output transformer through the transformer and onto the plate of the output valve. So I don't have to turn the radio over. That transformer's mounted up on the radio. So I should be able to test here, here, and here. There's three wires going to it. And these should have about 220 volts on it. And the other one should have something like 185. So this could be open or the rectifier may not be working. So I'll just put the multimeter on here. And as I said, we should be able to get two voltages the same and one somewhat lower. So I'm still on dim bulb, put some power on. I'll put a probe there and go here. Nothing there. Nothing there. Nothing there. Well, that's probably good news. It means the output transformer is probably not fried. Uh, it means that there's no power coming out of the rectifier, which means there's either none going in here. Uh, that resistor might be open. The other filaments are working, so there's power here. So it's probably that. Whoa. While I was going through that, that dim bulb came on bright. So I've killed the power to it. Um, so it's starting to cook something. That capacitor's gone short, probably. There's the mains input there. Um, active up here, neutral down there, hopefully. There's the across the line capacitor. So I'll cut that out. And uh, that's a fairly obvious failure point. There's the uh, capacitor there. Uh, if I cut that lead, that'll tell us whether that's the problem or not. I'll try it again. It's still on dim bulb, of course. It's been running for a little while now and it's back to normal. So I think it was that capacitor. It's only taking 21 watts. I would have thought it would be a bit higher than that. I'm not used to these radios, so I'm not sure if that's enough or not. But I would have thought it'd be higher than that. So I need to see what's coming out of this rectifier. I've got the radio upside down and powered up. I've grounded my lead here. This is number nine. This is the plate. So this should have uh, what mains is going in. And uh, it's got nothing. So I think there's a resistor between here and the mains. We'll have a look at that. I've just followed this wire back. This is the one that's coming off pin nine in the rectifier. And it's connected to this resistor here. The other leg of the resistor is going to this center point here. And here it is on the back here. And this is the one where you select the different voltages. So that resistor may be open. I'll test that. All right, I'll test that with the meter. Don't think there's anything bypassing it. No, it's open. So there's the voltage selector. And there it is there. Uh, looks like 100 ohm from here. R34. Uh, R34 is there, 160. I thought it might have been a 6. Uh, 160 and it's whoop, 4 watts. I'll we'll see what I've got. Okay, I've got two here at 330, which I've paralleled. So that should be 164 or so. Yeah, there it is. All right, good. I'll put those in. I've tacked that in and I've just kept it low so I can turn the radio upside down again. All right, uh, I'll turn it on again. And I would expect to see the watts come up higher than they were.
No. I'll just check these voltages again. They should have two at the same and one lower. 200. Uh, 200, roughly. This one here. Oh, they're all 200. Uh, that's not right. I guess that means that something's not pulling any voltage, so it's just sitting on whatever the supply is. I'll turn it over, we'll check some voltages on the bottom. I flipped it over, it's powered on. Uh, here's the socket of the output valve. Uh, now, this one, I think that's the plate, number seven. 200 volts, that's what I expect. And here's the screen, and I'll bet yeah, it's got nothing on it. Okay. Here's the resistor I replaced, so we've now got uh, rectified voltage coming through here, but it's sitting here and they're all the same. Now one of them should be pulling some power out and it's not. There's another resistor there, here's another resistor here. This goes down to the plate and that's got no voltage on it. So that resistor or that resistor uh, will be open, I would assume. I'll go and find those, we'll have a look. I just repowered it to buzz it out, now it's started working. So there's the plate. A big part of the screen. And we've got 80 odd volts on that. I'm not sure what it's supposed to be. Yeah, I wonder what changed. Um, there's the grid. So it's the output working. And sounds like a radio to a certain degree. I can't get to the tuner. The radio is upside down. All right, I'll turn it over. I'll see if it'll keep running. Right, I've powered the radio up again. Yeah, it's, re it's receiving. Yeah. Well, I don't know. The, there was no power on that um, screen at one point, and now there is, so there must be something loose in there somewhere. There should be stations here, but I'm not getting anything. So it's only using the internal aerial, um, which never works very well in here. Put it on FM. I've plugged the aerial in the back here, so we'll see if I can pick anything up. Something there. Sound a very good song. It doesn't sound very good. Anyway, uh, it is working. I, I don't know why. <laughs> uh, I think I need to just clean it all. It's a mess. It's very hard to actually work on because it's covered in dust. So I'll clean it all up. I don't know why it wasn't working, whether there's a bad solder joint or there just wasn't enough voltage to get it to work. I don't know. I'll find that out eventually. But in the meantime, I think it's time for a bath. I'm out in the workshop and I've got some compressed air. I'll just blow all this dust off. I've got some brushes and I've got some spray cleaners and some liquid cleaners. Uh, it doesn't look terribly dirty. I don't think there's any rust on it, but it's just got a lot of dust on it. I should be able to blow most of it away. That's removed most of the dust. I'll just go around and clean it now. Um, yeah, that's coming up okay. This is coming off pretty easy, so I'll just do all this. I'll come back after I've finished. That's cleaned up pretty well. There's still some bits I can't get to, but that's okay. I've got to take this capacitor out and stuff, so I'll be able to get to it later on. And I also cleaned all in here as well, got as much of the muck out that I could, and uh, that's come up quite nice too, so that'll be much easier to work on. Now, I just noticed this here. I think that's a test point sticking out the back there. I'm not sure what it's testing. Might be to do with the FM alignment, perhaps. Yeah, not sure. Okay. I'm back inside again and very happy with the way this is cleaned up. It looks good. Uh, there's still be some dirt behind this screen and I need to get this capacitor out. So, so I think I'll take the whole assembly off and that should expose the area behind here. I can't get to the screws underneath to remove this. And I do want to get this cover off or this um, diffuser. So I'm going to try and cut it out. This is probably very brittle. 
there's a little notch there that's holding it. I'll just bend it out of the way a bit. Mm. Hey. Now I can get to those two screws, I can then undo the bracket down the bottom. Well that exposed the capacitor, I can get to that a bit easier now. Yeah, this tuning capacitor can get cleaned properly and all around here can clean up as well. Now a lot of the wire here is in fact some sort of rubber or something, it's, it's falling apart. So I need to replace all this rubber here. These globes are probably the old 2 volt ones that Bush used to use. Uh, I didn't check to see if they were on, I think I saw one come on somewhere but I'm not sure. I guess they're both on because they're in series. Uh, this capacitor is 50 and 50, so I can put two 47s in there if I can get them to fit. Uh, it also says June 57, and I said this was a 56 radio, so clearly it is a 57 radio. Well, it's a 56 model, but built in 57. I've struck a bit of a problem. I can't get these capacitors in here. These are two 47s. I can't get them in that can to disguise them. There's a little bit of room here, so you wouldn't be able to see them. So what I'm thinking of doing is getting this clamp here, I'll take that out, taking this clamp, rotating it so this uh, connector here is on the other end, or the other side, that'll give me a bit more room there, and I should be able to get these two capacitors in there somewhere. The bracket goes there, and the other bracket leaves enough room when it's on there, and here's the volume control uh, leads, so if it's there it might introduce some hum, I can put a plate there perhaps and ground it. Hopefully that'll stop it if it does. We'll have to see how that works. I've just ducked out to the workshop for a minute. I was a little concerned about uh, that uh, capacitors radiating into the volume control. They probably won't, but I might as well just address it now. So that goes on there. These sit in here. Then I'm going to bend this area up here, up here, and then kind of just wrap them around a little bit. I'm not going to wrap them around, but just cradle them a bit. And that'll put a, a steel uh, wall between there and the volume control. Okay, I've bent that. I'll just bend these up a bit. Uh, I'll see how that went. That's not bad. Might be a bit tight. I was going to put some heat shrink around them. No, uh, that'll be all right. All right, that's how it'll look, and the other capacitor will go in here. It should just about cover those. I've made them a little bracket and the clamp there for the capacitor. So that's going to go in there. And these will fit in here. I need to do that screw up in there. I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to get on it. So I've done the clamp up. Now I should be able to do these nuts up here. And one over this side as well. All right, so that's the cure now. I'll put a bit of heat shrink around the capacitors just to sort of cushion it when it's in there and hold it together as well. You can still read the values. I'll put a small amount of silicon on there too, just so they don't rattle. Doesn't really need it. So hopefully I can get that in there and line those wires up. There we go. I need to bend these over and solder them onto the tag there. Uh, I've got to connect the uh, positive wires to the positive terminals here. And that'll be it. There's some, uh, the, the wires need to be replaced. The insulation's falling off. So I'll do all that and we'll come back. I've uh, soldered that up and put the wires back on. I've put a new safety capacitor across the line capacitor. I've also replaced that 160 ohm 
resistor with 150. I don't think it'll make too much difference. I'll check the voltages afterwards, but I, I think that'll be okay. The installation on most of the wiring here fell apart when I touched it, so I've either replaced the wires or put some heat shrink on. I think that's the top done for the time being, so I'll flip it over and we'll have a look at the bottom. Uh, I've got new uh, electrolytics to replace these ones. There's one there, one there, and one down here. Now these guys here, these um, orange capacitors, the manual says they're tubular paper. Now of course they're not tubular paper, so I don't know what they are. I'm hoping they're reliable, they've been upgraded to a better material, but I've got to change this capacitor here, so I thought maybe I'll unsolder it and I'll just check it and see if it's still 0.01. I've lifted the leg of the capacitor there and I've connected my meter to it. So it's rated at 0.01, we'll turn it on, uh, 2, that should do it, 0.01. So it's perfect. Yeah, I think they'll be okay, I don't think I need to replace those. Uh, I will go and replace all these now. There's also a wire here that's just cracked, the insulation just falling off it, so I'll replace that as well. When I've done all that, we'll come back and see how I went. Everything's done, I've changed those capacitors there. Here's the little electrolytics, uh, another one down here. That wire here where the insulation had come off, that was for the um, lamps, the dial lamps. So I've replaced that. I tested all the resistors. I'm, I had to test them in circuit, so it's not a very accurate way of doing it. Normally you'd take all the capacitors out and you could, you know, you disconnect them in one way or another and test them. But I didn't do it on this one. So I did go around and they were all okay. This one here was a little bit out, so I changed that one. This one over here, which I think is in the AGC, is high. It's over 20%, but only it's probably 22% over. Uh, I don't have one. I, I don't think it'll make any difference. Next time I go to the shop, I'll get a new one. Now, these capacitors here, I think someone's put them in later. I think these have all been replaced. They're tacked on the top. They're not embedded in the um, terminals like the rest of it. Everything else is wrapped around three times. These are just sitting on top. So somebody's changed all these, and that's why they don't line up with what's in the manual. Here's the casualty list, not too many parts in there. The 250 microfarad capacitors are missing from there, they're still in the radio. This is almost ready for a test. What I think I'll do first though is put the superstructure back on for the dial, and I can put the dial lamps on as well. So I'll turn it over and I'll do that. So I'll reassemble this. I've got to put this plate in here. So I've got one screw in. All right, that's done. There are some marks there that uh, align this that's on little slots, so you can adjust that. This one's a bit hard to get to. You can't hold, get to the screw. So I've got a screwdriver holding it. I'm going to try and put that on there. Now, this back plate here is adjustable as well. So I've lined it up with some marks on the back there. So it's back where it was. The main reason I wanted this mounted was I wanted to get these bulbs in. I didn't want them flopping around. They're almost impossible to get in Australia. What I'll do now is just attach these wires back to the speaker and we can try it out. I've removed the speaker and the output transformer. The output transformer's got two capacitors on the top, so I'll change those. I'll come back and we'll try the radio out. I replaced those capacitors on the top of the transformer there. I've got the speaker sitting here and the radio is connected to the power, so I should be able to turn it on. I've got it on dim bulb. We've got 240 odd volts, 238. Those lamps aren't on. Whoa, I hope they're not broken. Now it's settled at 26. I think we had about 27 when I was working last time. I can hear a little bit out of the speaker. Not getting any. It's about where it was last time. It's very quiet. Sorry, FM. Yeah, it's the same. Just getting the same. Should have sprayed those switches, eh? Hmm. Whoa. ABC Sport Digital Radio and ABC Listen App. What happened then? Not the volume, but it's... Oh, I can make it go up and down. Hang on. Brisbane 
Brisbane and to come. Uh, this brilliant yeah. win for uh, There's some sort of yeah, there's some intermittent connection somewhere. Uh, I said do it on FM. Hang on. No, it doesn't. Well, no, it doesn't appear to be. So it's something to do with the AM part of it. So let's go back to AM. Yeah, so if I push it that way, it works. Let's go to full power. Why don't we do that? The ball to Jaden Braley comes left to Frizzell, and he's tackled by Rudolph and the feeder 32 out from his own line. Ball play, Jaden Braley to the left. He steps into Blake Braley. The Cora came reeling in. All right, so that didn't make any difference. Well, it seems to be centered around there. If I push here, I can. No, I still can't get it. All right, there's something in that area. Um, I'll turn it around. Hang on. I've just turned the radio around, and if I push on that just slightly, it works. Um, so I need to look. Yeah, I need to look underneath. I think it's something to do with this tuner here. I'll just turn it over. I've turned it over, so its radio is working now. Uh, it can't be these little switches because they would have changed when I moved this selector, so it's not those. Now it's working. <laughs> it's gone now. Oh, I wonder what's going on. It seems to have the fault now. I've been tapping away, moving components around, trying to get this to f come back to what it was, and there's nothing. So, yeah, I don't know. I'll turn it back over again. It must be something up the top. There doesn't seem to be anything in here that's causing the trouble. All right, I'll turn it back over again, and now it won't fail. So, whoop. Oh, just as I said that it failed. In front by point twelve short halfway by Jade. He's halfway, last tackle work it to the left. Here's a left foot kick by Mech. Shays off at Cronulla. Body still a new body still the last by a mullet. I'm just shorting this to ground and it starts working. Okay. Now it's Mitchell Pierce running at the line, taken 17 metres out from the Cronulla goal line. Right, so that's that's what it is. It hasn't got a ground. I don't know if it's supposed to be grounded or, and I can't see why it isn't. It's mounted to the chassis. I don't know how anyone watches the Channel 9 coverage at home. Look at that. So, Newelli up the middle, put to the ground. All right, I'll have to see what's going on because that is connected to this bracket this bracket's connected to that that's going to the chassis i don't understand it here's the tuning section of the radio there's the antenna there's the variable capacitor there and both of those the oscillator and the antenna are going straight to ground there it is there now i know some hot chassis sets do keep this above ground but this one is definitely going to ground so i'll have to find out uh, what's going on if there's an earth strap or something missing Give me a minute, I'll have a look and I'm trying to tell you what's going on. I just had a very quick look then and uh, here's the ground, it's hard to see. That's going down to the chassis, it's bolted on. 
Uh, it comes over here and goes to this terminal here. This screw goes through to the FM module. The FM module is connected to the AM tuning capacitor. I've got a jump lead here. If I put that on there, it's not making any difference. But if I put it here, so that screw is not making contact with that module. So if I was to get a screwdriver and turn it, so that's what the problem is. There's um, a dirty contact between that screw and this module. So I think the best thing to do would be to run a ground lead from here to the module or the capacitor. And I think that'll fix all those problems. I'll take the uh, screw out and we'll just see what the bottom of it looks like. Well, that looks clean enough, but I think I'd be better putting another ground on just to make sure. I've made a little grounding strap and it's on the side of the FM module there. I cleaned up the material here. I've attached the other end here to a screw that was in the chassis already. I replaced the screw. The, the original screw was a bit too short, so I've put a slightly longer one in. I'm going to do the dial cord now. I've got the old bit of string, um, so it's a really simple layout. I've got the instructions, but um, you know, you, look, you don't need them goes there, that goes around there, uh, that goes down there, it would go onto the um, little spindle here, and the other one will go on the spindle as well, so that'll line up there. Uh, when it broke, I counted four turns around this spindle, so I have another piece of string, so I'll just do this very quickly. I'll put the spring on here, I've tied a string on it. Uh, I want to go, no, I want to go that way. I want to go that way, I want to do the spindle bit last that'll make more sense. So down there, that's three wraps I got on there and I need four and that's the reason I went in that direction. If I'd come down this pulley first I'd be trying to wrap it backwards. It would be difficult so that's the reason I went in one direction if if that makes any sense. All right up there. All right well that's it. So if I stretch the spring a bit, I'll just mark it so that I can know where I want to tie it off. I've tied the string onto the spring and so it should be just a matter of laying it out again. Should hook that on there. There we go. Um, now the cursor's got to go on here and along this runner that it runs along, there's little dots. And the dots, of course, represent a frequency for you to use during alignment. When I first pulled the radio out, it had a sticker here, and here it is, it just kind of fell off. Um, I thought it was just part numbers, but I cleaned it up, and it actually has the datum and the frequencies on here that align with the dots on this front um, slide here. So I've reproduced it, and I'll clean all this off, and I'll glue it on there, so I can use that to align the radio. Now I just put the cursor on, and that'll be it. There it is. Okay. All right, the next thing on the list is the alignment. I want to check the alignment. There's some indications that it has been played with, so I'll just make sure it's right. The alignment on this is slightly different to normal, uh, particularly the FM. So I, I will sort of show what I'm doing to a certain degree. Now I've got the radius standing up here on, the, on this carousel. I don't expect to be rotating it, but it just does give me a little bit more flexibility. Before we start the alignment, um, I'll just point out this three IF stages here. There's one, two, and three. I don't think I've seen that before anywhere. Um, there's three AM and uh, three FM. Here's the AM IF transformers. There's one, two, and three. And the other three are the FM. To inject the signal, I've soldered a 0.01 capacitor onto the grid of the mixer valve. I've connected my analog meter to the plate of the output valve, and I've done it on the top of this transformer, the output transformer here. I've taken the internal speaker out of the circuit and I've plugged it into the speaker dummy load. Uh, the IF on this is 470 kilohertz, so I've got the generator set to that. The radio's on and it's been warming up for about 15 minutes and the signal's there. I'll put it on dummy load so I don't have to listen to it. All right, I'll start on this one here and I th I'm pretty sure these will be okay. That's that one. Now this is the next AM one. I'll try the last one. Yeah, they're perfect. 
All right. I'm on the bottom of the radio now. I'll just adjust this one. And once again, that's perfect. All right, here's the middle IF, and I'll just check that. A bit hard to see. I've got my finger in the way, but yeah, once again, it's spot on. And here's the last one down here. All right, I didn't move those anywhere. They were perfect. I'm going to do the RF alignment, and I'm going to sit the radio on its base. Here's the 1500 kilocycle adjustment for the oscillator, and I think I can get this nut driver on the base when it's sitting down. I think so. So I'll just flip the radio over. All right, I've got the radio sitting the right way up now. Now, as I said the other day, there's little dots here that indicate various tuning positions. The little data sticker here uh, says that the end one is the datum to set this cursor up. So that's it there. Uh, this edge here is called the auxiliary pointer. And I've got to line that up with that datum dot. So I'll just slide him along. That'll be it. So now the point is set. To set the RF, I want to put it on 600. That's a typo. It actually had 1.6. It should be 0 0.6. So that's the third dot along. So I move this up. One, two, three. And that should be 600. I've set the generator to 600. I'll turn the volume up. Okay, it sounds like it's a little bit out. The adjustment for it is this little coil here. So I will just tune this till we get maximum sound and needle swing. All right, that's good. I need to run the pointer up to 1500 on the dial and it says here 1.5 is the second dot from the left. So there's the second dot from the left there where I've got my um, driver. So I'll line that up about there. I'll set my generator to 15. I'll turn the volume up again. And we're a bit out. Okay, I'll have to adjust that too. So there's the adjustment there and I can try and get this nut driver on here. There we go. I think that's good enough. I'll just adjust it with the tuning knob. And then I'll go back and have a look and see where the pointer is. Uh, all right, I'll just turn that down. Yeah, there it is there. And it's halfway across the dot, so it's perfect. I'll just leave that. I have the generator on 600. It's approaching the 600 mark here. I'll just tune it for maximum signal, which is there. And we're right on, halfway through. So that's perfect. I don't need to do any more there. The antenna trimmer is mounted on the loop stick. I'm going to fit the loop stick to the radio when the chassis is in, everything's finished. I'll put this in and I need to induce a signal using another external antenna and then I can trim that. So apart from the loop stick, that's the AM alignment done. Now let's look at the FM. If you remember when I was cleaning the chassis, I found this little test port at the back and I thought then it's probably an FM uh, tuning test point and that's exactly what it is. I'll just quickly show you it on the schematic. Here's the test point here. What I need to do is put two resistors here. I've got to solder those onto the test point and it goes down to the chassis here. Effectively, the two resistors are across this little circuit here. And then I'm going to put a voltmeter across there. Here's the IF uh, for the FM, this one, this one, and there's the primary of that third IF. And that's what I need to adjust and I'll get maximum voltage on this meter. This is the FM discriminator and you normally would detune this but there's no reference to do that so I'll just leave it where it is. Give me a second I'll set up the radio we can start the adjustment. Uh, now the test port here I put a little grounding lug I've soldered the two resistors onto it and there's the center point we're going to use later on. And I'll just connect the VTMM to it. All right. And I have the VTMM set up here and I've got it on DC volts and it's on the 15 volt scale. Also have my signal generator set up. It's on 10.7 uh, megahertz. There's no modulation with this. It's just the plain sine wave. And the signal's going in the mixer the same as it was before when I did the AM alignment. I've got some power on. This has been warming up for a little while. The instructions say to keep the voltage on about 4 volts. We're on the 15 volt scale so that's about 4 volts. 
and I've adjusted the amplitude there to get to 4 volts. Now this is the primary on the last transformer, the third transformer, and that's nowhere near long enough. So I'll use this one. And where is it? That. Wow, that's tight. That is wound so far down. So let's start about three quarters of an inch down. That's probably about right. And then move out. But I can't move that. Now just give it a short spray. Now this is deoxid, so hopefully it won't have any effect on the former. I don't want to break it. Alright, I'll have to work that. Um, oh, it's come loose. Alright, so I'll adjust it and we just need to peak that uh, voltmeter reading. Oh, it's got a fair bit of adjustment there. Alright, that's too high. I'll wind it back to the 4 volt mark again. Somewhere around there. Alright, nice. That slug was a long way down and I've brought it quite a bit up. And that's more like 3 quarters of an inch, which is what they said. Now to do the other ones, I'm going to have to stand the radio up. Um, I have to short out the primary while I adjust the secondary, short out the secondary while I adjust the primary. So I need to do that from the bottom. To short out these IF transformers, I've modified this old clip lead and put a 1K resistor inside here. I'll put it on here, and this is shorting out the secondary of the IF can. I'll adjust this, we'll just peak this one here. It's pretty close. All right. I got that clip on there, that wasn't easy to get to. Uh, this one I can get up here. I can do it without shorting everything out. There we go. I'll adjust this one. And once again, there's not much in it. All right, I'll take these clips off and put them on the primaries. All right, I got the clips on the primary now. Just adjust that one. These seem pretty good. I've moved the clips down to the primary on the first IF. Let's see if we get anything out of that. A little bit. All right, that's done. So that's worked out okay. I'll go back and check them all again and just might go adjust them if they need them. I'll come back when I've finished. I've swapped meters here and I've got this one set to 50 microamps DC and I've zeroed it right up in the mirrored area here on this zero. And I'll connect the meter to here, which is here on the schematic. And the other end goes on the junction of these two resistors. Now that meter's gone negative. I've got to get it back on the zeros. This is the bottom of the discriminator or the discriminator coil. And the slug's in there. It says to wind it out. So I've done that. Now I need to just wind that in until we get to zero on the meter. And it's going away. Let's hope it comes back. There it goes. So I need to just fine adjust that till I get to on the zero. Okay, that'll do. I forgot to say I took the DC meter off here. Um, I will put that back on. I've got to check the primary on that same coil, make sure it hasn't changed. I checked that discriminator primary and it was fine, didn't need adjusting. I've moved the generator output onto the input of the FM antenna. This coil is mounted in the module and this is the last one before we go to the RF adjustment. So once again just peak these two coils. There's one on the bottom here. That'll do. This is the lower coil in the same can. I'm just getting it through the back of the module. So I'll adjust that. I think that's about it there. All right. The next item on the list is to set this pointer. I've switched to an old valve generator here. This goes to 87.5 and I've got that selected. I was going to use a harmonic on the other generator, but I'll use this one. All right, I'll just move the cursor along. Should be there. No? No, that's not it. Oh. Is it that far out? That's a long way out. There's the adjustment for it. You have to move this around the arc. I'll try it. I'm not totally convinced I'm doing the right thing here. I can't believe it's that far out. Unless somebody's adjusted it that way. Hmm. 
Okay. Uh, now the next thing is to take it down to 94. So I put it on 94 and there it is. Uh, now there's an adjustment here. It just says to peak it here. So that's all I'll do. That's about it. That's all I'm getting. Okay. I think that's the FM done. I was doing one last check as always and I saw this. This is a Hunt's capacitor and I changed probably another three of the brown ones but it just blended in and I just didn't pick it up. Anyway, I'll take it out. We might even test it. I've replaced the cap. It was a blocking cap or a coupling cap that went into the grid of the preamp. It's after all the alignment so it won't affect it I don't think. Uh, I've got it on my tester here. It's a 0 0.04 uh, but the tester says it's a 0 0.08 so it's definitely leaky. I've taken the radio outside with the internal aerials. I, it won't work properly inside. It's been warming up. Nothing. Oh, yeah, something there. Personas en total han sido ya evacuadas en varios vanos operados por Australia y por Reino Unido. Beautiful one day, perfect the next, that's Queensland. And the music that accompanies all this perfection is of course the easy That's on the Gold Coast, that's about 60, 70 k's away. Next up is Rod Stewart. Uh -huh. Seems to be going alright. Now, if you're looking for a job or you want... That's a local station, that's only up the road. I'll be able to help you. Hi there, this is Sue with Joblock. Beautiful. I'll put it on AM, we'll see what we get there. On to the ice cream. Now, for some reason, our dogs go mad. Can't imagine why. Can't imagine no, why. No, I can't imagine why. No. You've, got to, you've got to try it. You know how good... <laughs> We all know how good So that's the ABC station. Mm. Let's walk AQ. Is Radio National coming up? What if the Australian Maybe. government says no? Uh, we'll keep fighting that. These people, this is an interpreter family. There should be one more up here. Not sure what that is. Uh, that's working really well too. So I'll take it back inside. I think I can just about put it in the case. And I've pulled the case apart and cleaned it up and it's come up really well. There's no yellowing in it and it's a really thick well-made case. It's very nice. I washed it in the trough and polished it up with some Brasso. And the knobs have cleaned up really nice too. They're nice and bright now. I polished all these. The uh, plastic clear back on here is still very clear. It hasn't deteriorated. Uh, they'd come off. They're actually supposed to be glued onto the knobs, so I've glued them back on. All right, I'll start putting this back together. It's all back together now. Gosh, it looks fantastic. I've replaced the wire on the back there and cleaned up the back surface there. So that looks nice. There's a few other things I'll look at before I put the back on. 
now that the antenna's mounted and it's got all this metal work around it, I'm going to adjust it. Now, of course, I've got to adjust the coil and there's a trimmer. So the coil I'm going to do at 600, the trimmer I'll do at 1500 kilocycles. I've got the generator on 600 kilocycles, or kilohertz, I suppose. I've also attached my analog meter as well. The radio is tuned to 600 and I'll just turn it up a bit. Now I've got to slide this along this uh, ferrite rod and I'm not, me touching it of course is going to affect it. So I'll just move it one way and it's very tight. And we had it on 40, that's worse. Just under. So I'm looking at the top scale there, it's got 50 and then 40 and 30. I reckon where it was was right. Which wouldn't be surprising. Uh, maybe a little bit more there. Yeah. No, it's going back. So but where I was was just over. Okay, I think that's about as good as that's going to get. I'll just run this up to 1500. Now I've tuned it to 1500 and I can see it in the back here because those little dots are visible from the back. So all I have to do is tune this little trimmer here. As I said, the generator's on 15 and the radio's on 15. And that was, that was on the mark there. Yeah. Right, that's done. Well, that's it now. The antenna is aligned. But to confuse any future technician, I've soldered a couple of little wires on here. It's just a loop, uh, just so that it looks a bit more natural than just two empty terminals standing up. All that's left to do is just screw the back on here. This is a Bush VHF90, manufactured in about 1956 57. This particular radio is in near perfect condition. It's very, very nice. I have it running, but in this room there's too much noise and the signal just can't get through here. There wasn't much to do with this, didn't change many parts. Tried a new mounting option for the electrolytics, had a bit of trouble finding a bad earth on the tuning capacitor, and a very unusual alignment procedure. But well worth the effort and the radio works perfectly outside absolutely sounds very very nice something that i forgot to follow up was the dial lamps bush originally used 3.5 volt by 150 milliamps i could only get two and a half volt by 300 milliamps so uh, much heavier than what they had originally the, the amount of light those lamps putting out are almost nothing it's just a very dull glow so here's the dial light here in a fully dark room that's it <laughs> Anyway, that was fairly typical of Bush Radio, so it's probably not far off what it was originally. I enjoyed working on this, and I'm very happy with the result. I hope you enjoyed it as well, and I hope you can join me for my next radio adventure.